Othello is a Moorish soldier commanding the armies of the Venetian Republic. Rodrigo, a rich young Venetian, asks Iago, Othello's ensign, the reason for his hatred of Othello. Who told me thou didst hold him in thy hate? Despise me if I do not. Three great ones of the city in personal suit to make me his lieutenant off cap to him. And by the faith of man, I know my price. I'm worth no worse a place. But he, as loving his own pride and purposes, non-suits my mediators. For certes, says he, I have already chose my officer. And what was he? One Michael Cassio, a Florentine, that never sat a squadron in the field, nor the division of a battle knows more than a spinster. But he, sir, had the election. He, in good time, must his lieutenant be. And I, God bless the mark, his worship's ancient. By heaven, I rather would have been his hangman. Now, sir, be judge yourself whether I, in any just term, am a fine to love the moor. I would not follow him, then. Oh, sir, content you. I follow him to serve my turn on him. It is as sure as you are, Rodrigo, were I the moor. <laughs> I would not be Iago. In following him, I follow but myself. Heaven is my judge, not I for love and duty, but seeming so for my peculiar end. I am not what I am. <laughs> Othello is secretly married to Desdemona, the daughter of Brabantio, a Venetian senator. Rodrigo also desires Desdemona. And Iago, who is battening upon Rodrigo's purse, reveals to Brabantio the secret marriage. Othello is summoned before the Senate of Venice on state affairs. With him is his lieutenant Michael Cassio, Iago and Rodrigo. Brabantio complains to the Duke, that Othello has stolen his daughter. My daughter, oh, my daughter. Dead? Why to me? She is abused, stolen from me, and corrupted by spells and medicines bought of mountebanks. What in your own part, Othello, can you say to this? Nothing but this is so. Most potent, grave, and reverend signor. My very noble and approved good masters, that I have ta'en away this old man's daughter, tis most true. True, I have married her. The very head and front of my offending hath this extent no more. Rude am I in my speech, and little blessed with a soft phrase of peace, for since these arms of mine had seven years pith till now some nine moons wasted, they have used that dearest action in the tended field, and little of this great world can I speak more than pertains to feats of broil and battle. And therefore, little shall I grace my cause in speaking for myself. Yet, by your gracious patience, I will a round, unvarnished tale deliver of my whole course of love. What drugs, what charms, what conjurations, and what mighty magic for such proceeding am I charged with all I won his daughter? A maiden never bold, of spirit so still and quiet that her motion blushed at herself. And she, in spite of nature, of country, quitted everything to fall in love with what she feared to look on. Ah, why this should be. Therefore vouch again that with some mixtures powerful o'er the blood, or with some dram conjured to this effect, he wrought upon her. To vouch this is no proof. But Othello, speak. Did you, by indirect and forced course, subdue and poison this young maid's affection? I do beseech you, send for the lady to the secretary, and let her speak of me before her father. Fetch Desdemona hither. And till she come, as truly as to heaven I do confess the vices of my blood, so justly to your grave ears I'll present how I did thrive in this fair lady's love and she in mine. Say it, Othello. Her father loved me, oft invited me, still questioned me the story of my life from year to year, the battles, sieges, fortunes that I have passed. 
I ran it through even from my boyish days to the very moment that he bade me tell it. Wherein I spake of most disastrous chances, of moving accidents by flood and field, of hairbreadth scapes in the imminent deadly breach, of being taken by the insolent foe and sold to slavery, of my redemption thence and portents in my travel's history, wherein of entries vast and deserts idle, rough quarries, rocks and hills whose heads touch heaven, it was my hint to speak. These things to hear were Desdemona seriously inclined, and often did beguile me of her tears. My story being done, she gave me for my pains a world of sighs, and bade me, if I had a friend that loved her, I should but teach him how to tell my story, and that would woo her. Upon this hint I spake. She loved me for the dangers I had passed, and I loved her that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft I have used. Here comes the lady. Let her witness it. I think this tale would win my daughter, too. I pray you hear her speak. Come hither, Desdemona. Do you perceive in all this noble company where most you owe obedience? My noble father, I do perceive here a divided duty. To you I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me how to respect you. You are the lord of duty, and I am hitherto your daughter. But here's my husband. And so much duty as my mother showed to you, preferring you before her father. So much I challenge that I may profess. You to the more, my lord. God be with you, I have done. Please it your grace unto the state affairs. The Turk with the most mighty preparation makes for Cyprus. Othello, the fortitude of the place is best known to you. You must therefore be content to slubber the gloss of your new fortunes with this more stubborn and boisterous expedition. The tyrant custom, most grave senators, hath made the flinty and steel couch of war my thrice-driven bed of down. Most humbly, therefore, bending to your state, I crave fit disposition for my wife as levels with her breeding. If you please, be it at her father's. I will not have it so. Nor I. Nor I. I would not bear as I to put my father in impatient thoughts by being in his eye. Most gracious duke, that I did love the more to live with him. My downright violence and storm of fortunes made trumpet to the world. So that, dear lords, if I be left behind, a moth of peace, and he go to the war, the rights for which I love him are bereft me. Let me go with him. Let her have your voices. Be it as you shall privately determine, either for her stay or going. The affair cries haste, and speed must answer it. You must away tonight. <gasps> With all my heart. At nine in the morning, here we'll meet again. Othello, leave some officer behind, and he shall our commission bring to you. So please your grace, my ancient. A man he is of honesty and trust. To his conveyance I assign my wife. With what else needful, your good grace shall think to be sent after me. Let it be so. Good night to everyone. Provencio. If virtue no delighted beauty lack, your son-in-law is far more fair than black. Adieu, brave Moor. Use Desdemona well. Look to our Moor if thou hast eyes to see. She has deceived her father and may thee. My life upon her faith. Honest Iago. My Desdemona must I leave to thee. I prithee let thy wife attend on her and bring them after in the best advantage. Come, Desdemona. I have but an hour of love, of worldly matter and direction to spend with thee. We must obey the time. Iago. What says thou, Rodrigo? I will incontinently drown myself. <laughs> if thou dost, I shall never love thee after. Why, thou silly gentleman, put money in my purse. 
followed by the wars, defeat by favor with an usurped beard. I say, put money in thy purse. It cannot be that Desdemona should long continue her love to the moor. Put money in thy purse, nor he his to her. These moors are changeable in their wills. Fill thy purse with money. She must change for youth. When she is sated with his body, she will find the errors of her choice. She must, therefore, put money in thy purse. If sanctimony and a frail vow betwixt an erring barbarian and a super subtle Venetian be not too hard for my wits and all the tribe of hell, thou shalt enjoy her. Therefore, make money. Wilt thou be fast to my hopes if I depend on the issue? Thou art sure of me. Go, make money. I have told thee often, and I retell thee again and again. I hate the Moor. Let us be conjunctive in our revenge against him. If thou canst cuckold him, thou dost thyself a pleasure, me a sport. There are many events in the womb of time which will be delivered. Traverse, go, provide thy money. We'll have more of this tomorrow. Adieu. Where shall we meet in the morning? At my lodging. Go to farewell. I'll go sell all my land. <laughs> Thus do I ever make my fool my purse. For I, mine own gained knowledge, should profane if I would time expend with such a snipe but for my sport and profit. I hate the moor. And tis thought abroad that twixt my sheets he hath done my office. I know not if be true, but I, for mere suspicion in that kind, will do as if for surety. Cassio is a proper man. Let me see now. To get his place and to plume up my will in double knavery. How? How? Let's see. After some time to abuse Othello's ears that Cassio is too familiar with his wife. The moor is of a free and open nature that thinks men honest that but seem to be so, and will as tenderly be led by the nose as asses are. I have to. It is engendered. Hell and night must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light. The expedition to Cyprus is scattered by violent storms at sea. Thus Cassio's ship arrives first at the island. Soon after, Desdemona arrives, attended by Iago and his wife Amelia, and by Roderigo in disguise. At last, Othello's ship puts in. Othello and Desdemona, reunited, retire to the castle, and Cassio is appointed officer of the watch. That night, Iago contrives to make Cassio drunk and sets Roderigo on to provoke him to a quarrel. A fight ensues in which Montano, Othello's predecessor in Cyprus, is wounded. Othello is aroused and descends upon the brawling officers. Oh, for your life! Oh, 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 gentlemen! Have you forgotten all that? Please, and duty. Hold! The general speaks to you. Hold! Why, hey, hey, hold, hold! hold. 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 this... A Christian shame put by this barbarous troll. Silence that dreadful bell. What is the matter, masters? Honest Iago looks dead with grieving. Speak, who began this? On thy love, I charge thee. I do not know. Friends all but now, and then but now, swords out and tilting one that others breast in opposition bloody. How comes it, Michael, you others forgot? I pray you pardon me. I cannot speak. Worthy Montano, what's the matter that you unlace your reputation thus and spend your rich opinion for the name of a night brawler? Give me answer to it. Worthy Othello, I am hurt to danger. Your officer Iago can inform you of all that I do know. Now, by heaven, my blood begins my safer guides to rule, and passion, having my best judgment collied, essays to lead the way. Zounds, if I stir or do but lift this arm, the best of you shall sink in my rebuke. What? In a town of war, yet wild, the people's hearts brimful of fear, to manage private and domestic quarrel in night, and on the court and guard of safety, it is monstrous. 
Iago, who began it? I had rather have this tongue cut from my mouth than it should do offense to Michael Cassio. But men are men. The best sometimes forget. Yet surely Cassio, I believe, received some strange indignity which patience could not pass. I know, Iago, thy love and honesty doth mince this matter, making it light to Cassio. Cassio, I love thee, but never more be officer of mine. Oh. Look, if my gentle love be not raised up, I'll make thee an example. What's the matter? All's well now, sweeting, come away to bed. Iago, look with care about the town and silence those whom this vile brawl distracted. Come, Desdemona, tis the soldier's life to have their balmy slumbers waked with strife. What? Are you hurt, Lieutenant? I past all surgery. Mary, God forbid. Reputation, reputation, reputation. Oh, I have lost my reputation. I have lost the immortal part of myself and what remains is bestial. My reputation, Iago, my reputation. As I am an honest man, I had thought you'd receive some bodily wound. There's more sense in that than in reputation. What man, there are ways to recover the general again. You to him again, and he's yours. I will ask him for my place again. He shall tell me I am a drunkard. Every inordinate cup is unblessed, and the ingredient is a devil. Come, come. Good wine is a good familiar creature, if it be well used. I will tell you what you shall do. Our general's wife is now the general. Confess yourself freely to her. Importune her help to put you in your place again. You advise me well. And the times in the morning, I will beseech the virtuous Desdemona to undertake for me. I am desperate of my fortunes if they check me here. You are in the right. Good night, Lieutenant. I am as to the watch. Good night, honest Iago. <laughs> and what's he then that says I play the villain? When this advice is free, I give an honest Pobble to thinking, and indeed the cause to win the moor again. How am I then a villain to counsel Cassio to this parallel course directly to his good? Divinity of hell. When devils will their blackest sins put on, they do suggest at first with heavenly shows, as I do now. For whilst this honest fool applies Desdemona to repair his fortunes, and she for him pleads strongly to the moor, I'll pour this pestilence into Othello's ear, that she repeals him for her body's lust. And by how much she strives to do him good, she shall undo her credit with the moor. So will I turn her virtue into pitch, and out of her own goodness make the net that shall enmesh them all. And now, Rodrigo. I have been tonight exceedingly well cudgelled, and I think the issue will be I shall, with no money at all and a little more wit, return again to Venice. How poor are they that have not patience? Does not go well. Cassio hath beaten thee, and thou by that small hurt hath cashiered Cassio. By the mast is morning. Pleasure and action make the hours seem short. Away, I say, I shall hear more hereafter. Nay, get thee gone. Two things are to be done. My wife must move for Cassio to her mistress. I'll set her on. Myself, meanwhile, to draw the moor apart and bring him jump where he may Cassio find soliciting his wife. Aye, that's the way. Thou not device by coldness and delay. Next morning, Desdemona, attended by Amelia, receives Cassio, who pleads with Desdemona to intercede for him. Iago and Othello come upon them as Cassio takes his leave. Ah, I like not that. What did thou say, Iago? Well, nothing, my lord, or if the... I know not what. Was not that Cassio parted from my wife? Cassio, my lord? No, sure, I cannot think that he would steal away so... Guilty like seeing you coming. I do believe it was he. How oh, now, my lord? I have been talking with a suitor here, a man that languishes in your displeasure. Who is it you mean? Why, your Lieutenant Cassio. Oh. Good, my lord, if I have any grace or power to move you, his present reconciliation take. 
I pray thee, call him back. Not now, sweet Desdemona, some other time. But shall be shortly? The sooner sweet for you. Shall be tonight at supper? No, not tonight. Uh, tomorrow at dinner, then? I shall not dine at home. I meet the captains at the citadel. Why, then, tomorrow night? Or Tuesday morn? Or Tuesday noon or night? Or, or Wednesday morn? <laughs> oh, I pray thee, name the time, but let it not exceed three days. In faith, he's penitent. When shall he come? <laughs> what? Michael Cassio that came a-wooing with you to have so much to do to bring him in. Trust me, I could do much. Pray thee no more. Let him come when he will. I will deny thee nothing. Whereon I do beseech thee, grant me this to leave me but a little to myself. Shall I deny you? No. Farewell, my lord. Farewell, my Desdemona. I'll be with thee straight. Amelia, come. Be as your fancies teach you. Whate'er you be, I am obedient. Excellent wretch. Perdition catch my soul, but I do love thee, and when I love thee not, chaos is come again. My noble lord, what dost thou say, Iago? Did Michael Cassio, when you wooed my lady, know of your love? He did, from first to last. Why dost thou ask? Not for the satisfaction of my thought, no further harm. Why have that thought, Iago? I did not think he had been acquainted with her. Oh, yes. And went between us very oft. Indeed. Indeed. Ah, indeed, discerns the ward in that. Is he not honest? Honest, my lord? Honest, aye, honest. My lord, for aught I know. What dost thou think, Iago? Think, my lord? Think, my lord? By heaven, he echoes me as if there were some monster in his thought too hideous to be shown. Thou dost mean something. I heard thee say even now, thou likest not that when Cassio left my wife. Oh. What didst not like? And when I told thee he was of my counsel in my whole course of wooing, thou criedst, indeed, and didst contract and purse thy brow together as if thou then hadst shut up in thy brain some horrible conceit. If thou dost love me, show me thy thought. For Michael Cassio, I dare be sworn I... Think he is honest? I think so too. Men should be what they seem, or those that be not would they might seem none. Certain men should be what they seem. Why then I think that Cassio is an honest man. Nay, yet there's more in this. I pray thee speak to me as to thy thinkings, as thou dost ruminate and give thy worst of thoughts the worst of words. Good, my lord, pardon me. Though I am bound to every act of duty, I am not bound to that all slaves are free to. Utter my thoughts? Why, well, say they are vile and false, as well as that palace wherein to foul things sometimes intrude not. Thou dost conspire against thy friend, Iago, if thou but thinkst him wronged and makest his ear a stranger to thy thought. I do beseech you. It were not for your quiet, nor your good, nor for my manhood, honesty, or wisdom to let you know my thought. What dost thou mean? Good name in man and woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Mm -hmm. Who steals my purse steals trash. Tis something, nothing. Twas mine, tis his, and has been slave to thousands. But he that filches from me my good name robs me of that which not enriches him and makes me poor indeed. By heaven, I'll know thy thought. You cannot if my heart were in your hand, nor shall not whilst is in my custody. Huh? Oh, beware, my lord, of jealousy. It is the green-eyed monster which doth mock the meat it feeds on. That cuckold lives in bliss who certain of his fate loves not his wronger. But, oh, what damned minutes tells he o'er who dotes, yet doubts, suspects, yet strongly loves. Oh, misery. Good God, the souls of all my tribe defend from jealousy. Why, why is this? Thinkst thou I'd make a life of jealousy to follow thus the changes of the moon with fresh suspicions now? To be once in doubt is once to be resolved. Tis not to make me jealous to say my wife is fair, feeds well, loves company, is free of speech, sings, plays, and dances well, where virtue is, these are more virtuous. 
No, Iago, I'll see before I doubt. When I doubt, prove, and on the proof there is no more but this. Away at once with love or jealousy. I am glad of it. I speak not yet of proof. Look to your wife. Observe her well with Cassio. Wear your eye thus, not jealous nor secure. I would not have your free and noble nature out of self-bounty be abused. Look to it. In Venice they do let heaven see the pranks they dare not show their husbands. Their best conscience is not to leave undone, but to keep unknown. Does thou say so? She did deceive her father, marrying you. And when she seemed to shake and fear your look, she loved the most. And so she did. Why go to then? She that so young could give out such a seeming to seal her father's eyes up close as oak. He thought it was witchcraft. Uh -huh. oh, but I am to blame. I, I humbly do beseech you of your pardon for it. Too much loving you. I am bound to thee forever. I see this hath a little dashed your spirits. Not a jot, not a jot. Hey, faith, I fear it has. I hope you will consider what is spoke comes from my love. Cassio's my worthy friend. Oh. My lord, I see you're moved. No, not much moved. I do not think, but Desdemona's on it. Long live she so, and long live you to think so. And yet how nature erring from itself. Hi, there's the point, as to be bold with you, not to affect many proposed matches of her own clime, complexion, and degree, whereto we see in all things nature tends. For one may smell in such a one a will most rank, foul disproportion, thoughts are natural. <sighs> oh, but pardon me, I, I do not in position distinctly speak of her, though I may fear her will, recoiling to her better judgment, may fall to match you with her country forms and happily repent. Farewell. Farewell. If more thou dost perceive, let me know more. Set on my wife to observe. My lord. Leave me, Iago. My lord. I take my leave. This fellow is of exceeding honesty and knows all qualities with a learned spirit of human dealings. If I do prove her haggard, though that her jesses were my dear heartstrings, I'd whistle her off and let her down the wind to pray at fortune. Haply, for I am black. And have not those soft parts of conversation that chambers have, or for I am declined into the veil of years. Yet that's not much. I am abused, and my relief must be to loathe her. O oh, curse of marriage, that we can call these delicate creatures ours and not their appetites. I had rather be a toad and live upon the vapor of a dungeon than keep a corner in the thing I love for others' uses. Othello! Desdemona, come. Othello! If she be then heaven mocks itself. I'll not believe it. Oh, now, my dear Othello, your dinner and the generous islanders by you invited do attend your presence. I am to blame. Why do you speak so faintly? Are you not well? I have a pain upon my forehead here. Faith, that's with watching. Oh. Twill away again. Let me but bind it hard within this hour, it will be well. Your neck in his too little legend alone. <gasps> Oh, come, I'll go in with you. I'm very sorry that you are not well. Ah, I'm glad I found this napkin. This was her first remembrance from the moor. My wayward husband hath a hundred times wooed me to steal it. But she so loves the token that she reserves it evermore about her to kiss and talk to. And now, what do you hear alone? Do not you chide. I have a thing for you. What would you give me now for that same handkerchief? What handkerchief? What handkerchief? Why, that the moor first gave to Desdemona, that which so often you did bid me steal. Has stolen it from her? No, Faith. She let it drop by negligence, and to the advantage, I being here, took it up. Look, here it is. Uh Good wench, give it me. No. What wilt thou do with it? 
that thou hast been so earnest to have me filch it? Poor lady, she shall run mad when she shall lack Be it. Be not a gnonant. I have a use for it. Go, leave me. I will in Cassio's lodging lose this napkin and let him find it. Trifles light as air are to the jealous confirmation strong as proofs of holy writ. This may do something. The mood already changes with my poison. Dangerous conceits are in their nature's poisons, which at the first are scarce found to distaste. But with the little act upon the blood, burn like the mines of sulphur. I did say so. Look where he comes. Not poppy nor mandragoron or all the drowsy syrups of the world shall ever medicine thee to that sweet sleep which thou owedst yesterday. Ah, false to me. I have not general no more of that. Avant be gone, thou hast set me on the rack. I swear it is better to be much abused than but to know it a little. Oh, now, my lord. What sense had I of her stole now is of lust? I saw it not, thought it, that it harmed not me. I slept the next night well, was free and merry. I found not Cassio's kisses on her lips. He that is robbed, not wanting what is told, let him not know it. He's not robbed at all. I'm sorry to hear this. I had been happy if the general camp, pioneers and all, had tasted her sweet body, so I had nothing known. Oh, no, forever farewell, the tranquil mind. Farewell, content. Farewell, the plumed troop and the big wars that make ambition virtue. Farewell. Farewell, the neighing steed and the shrill trump, the spirit stirring drum, the ear piercing fife, the royal banner and all quality pride, pomp and circumstance of glorious war and all. You mortal engines whose rude throats the immortal Jove's dread clamors counterfeit. Farewell, Othello's occupation gone. Is it possible, my lord? Well, huh? be sure thou prove, my lover whore. Be uh, sure of it. Give me the option of proof. Uh, For by the worth of mine eternal soul, thou hast been better have been born a dog than answer my way crap. Uh, oh, is come for this? If thou dost slander her and torture me, never pray more. Abandon all remorse. On horror's head, horrors accumulate. Do deeds to make heaven weep all earth amazed. For nothing canst thou to damnation add greater than that. Oh, Chris, for heaven, forgive me. Are you a man? Have you a soul or sense? God be with you. Take mine office. Take note, take note, O world. To be direct and honest is not safe. By the world, I think my wife be honest. I think she is not. I think that thou art just. I think thou art not. I'll have some proof. Her name that was as fresh as Diane's visage is now begrimed and black as mine own face. If there be cords or knives, poison or fire or suffocating streams, I'll not endure it. Would I was satisfied. But how? How satisfied, my lord? Would you, the supervisor, grossly gape on, behold her top? Death and damnation. A tedious difficulty, I think, to bring them to that prospect. Oh. But yet I say, if imputation and strong circumstances which lead directly to the door of truth will give you satisfaction, you may have to. Give me a living reason she's disliked. I do not like the office. But since I meant it in this cause so far, picked to it by foolish honesty and love, I will go on. Tell me about this. Have you not sometimes seen a handkerchief spotted with strawberries in your wife's hand? I gave her such a one. It was my first gift. I know not that. But such a handkerchief, I'm sure it was your wife's. Did I today see Cassio wipe his beard with? If it be that. If it be that or any that was hers, it speaks against her with the other proofs. Oh. A slave had 40,000 lives. One is too poor, too weak for my revenge. Now do I see it is true. Look here, Iago. All my fun love thus do I blow to heaven. Tis gone. Arise, black vengeance, from thy hollow cell. Yield up all love thy crown and heart and throne to tyrannous hate. 
Swell bosom with thy fraught forties of aspic's tongue. Yet be content. Oh, blood. Blood, blood. Patience, I say. Your mind, perhaps, may change. Never, Iago, like to the Pontic Sea, whose icy current and compulsive course ne'er feels retiring head, but keeps you on to the Propontic and the Hellespont. Even so, my bloody thoughts with violent pace shall ne'er look back, ne'er ebb to humble love, till that a capable and wide revenge swallow them up. Now, Yon marble heaven in the due reverence of a sacred vow I hear engage my words. Do not rise yet. Witness, you ever-burning lights above, you elements that clip us round about. Witness that here Iago doth give up the execution of his wit, hands, heart, to wrong the fellow's service. Uh, Let him command, and to obey shall be in me remorse. What bloody business ever. I greet thy love, and will upon the instant put thee to it. Alive. My friend is dead. It is done at your request, but let her live. Damn her, you need so damn her. Come, go with me apart. I will withdraw to furnish me with some swift means of death for the fair devil. No, art thou my lieutenant? I am your own forever. <laughs> Cassio finds Desdemona's handkerchief in his lodgings, where Iago has left it, and asks Bianca, his mistress, to have it copied. Iago arranges that a fellow shall see Cassio handing the handkerchief to Bianca, and the fellow is thus persuaded that it was indeed given to Cassio by Desdemona. How oh, shall I murder him, Iago? Did you perceive how he laughed at his vice? Oh, Iago. Yeah. And did you see the handkerchief? Was that mine? Yours by this hand. And to see how he prizes the foolish woman, your wife. She gave it him, and he hath given it his whore. I would have him nine years a killing. Oh, a fine woman, a fair woman, a sweet woman. Nay, hey, you must forget that. I let her rot and perish and be damned tonight, for she shall never live. So delicate with her needle, an admirable musician. She will sing the savageness out of a bear of so high and plenteous wit and invention. She's the worst for all this. Nay, that's certain, and yet the pity of it, Iago. Oh, Iago, the pity of it, Iago. If you are so fond over her iniquity, give her patent to offend. For if it touch not you, it comes near nobody. I will chop her into messes. Cuckold me. Oh, it is foul in her. With my officer. That's fouler. Get me some poison, Iago, this night. I'll not expostulate with her, lest her body and beauty unprovide my mind again this night, Iago. Do it not with poison. Strangle her in her bed. Even the bed she hath contaminated. Good. Good, the justice of it pleases. Very good. And for Cassio, let me be his undertaker. You shall hear more by midnight. Once again, Iago uses Roderigo and persuades him to waylay Cassio. But Roderigo only wounds Cassio and is himself wounded. Realizing that Roderigo now knows too much, Iago kills him. Desdemona retires to sleep, and the fellow, bearing a lighted taper, enters the bedchamber. It 
she is the cause, my soul. Let me not name it to you, you chaste stars. It is the cause. Yet I'll not shed her blood, nor scar that whiter skin of hers than snow and smooth as monumental alabaster. Yet must she die, else she'll betray more men. Put out the light, and then put out the light. If I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again thy former light restore, should I repent me. But once put out thy light, thou cunningst pattern of excelling nature, I know not where is that Promethean heat that can thy light renew. When I have plucked the rose, I cannot give it vital growth again. It needs must wither. I'll smell it on the tree. Oh, balmy breath that does almost persuade justice to break her sword. One more. Be thus when thou art dead, and I will kill thee and love thee after. I must weep, but they are cruel tears. This sorrow's heavenly, it strikes where it doth love. <laughs> she wakes. Who's there? Oh, hello. Why does Demona? Will you come to bed, my lord? Have you prayed tonight, Desdemona? Aye, my lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime unreconciled as yet to heaven and grace solicit for it straight. Alack, oh, my lord, what may you mean by that? Well, do it and be brief. I will walk by. I would not kill thy unprepared spirit, no. Heaven for fend, I would not kill thy soul. You walk, you of killing. I do. And heaven have mercy on me. Amen with all my heart. And yet I fear you, for you are fatal then when your eyes roll so. Why I should fear, I know not, since guiltiness I know not. But yet I feel I fear. Think on thy sin. There are loves I bear to you. I and for that thou diest. What's the matter? That handkerchief which I so loved and gave to thee, thou gavest to Cassio. No, by my life and soul. Send for the man and ask him. By heaven I saw my handkerchief in his hand. Oh, perjured woman. Thou dost stone my heart and makes me call what I intend to do a murder, which I thought a sacrifice. I saw the handkerchief. He found it then. I never gave it him. Send for him hither. Let him confess a truth. No, his mouth is stopped. Honest Iago hath taken orders for it. Oh, oh, my fair interpret. What is he then? Had all his hairs been lives, my great revenge had stomach for them all. Alas, he is betrayed, and I undone. Outstrumpted, oh. weep, thou for him to my face. Banish me, my lord, but kill me not. Don't, strumpet. Tomorrow let me live tonight. Nay, if you strive. But half an hour. Being done, there is no pause. But I say one prayer. It is too late. Oh, no. Not dead, not yet quite dead. I that am cruel, I'm yet merciful. I would not have thee linger in thy pain. So, so. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Who's there? Oh, good, my lord. I would speak a word with you. It is Amelia. By and by. Like Amelia comes to speak of Cassio's death, shall she come in? My good. If she come in, she'll sure speak to my wife. My wife. My wife. What wife? 
I have no wife. Oh, insupportable, oh, heavy hour. Methinks it should be now a huge eclipse of sun and moon, and that the affrighted globe should yawn at alteration. Why do you seek your right people? Oh, good my lord! I had forgot thee. Oh, come in, Emilia! Soft. By and by. Let me the curtain draw. Where art thou? What's the matter with thee now? Oh, good my lord, yonder's foul murder done. But now... But now, my lord. It is the very error of the moon. She comes more nearer earth than she was wont and makes me mad. Cassio, my lord, hath killed a young Venetian called Roderigo. Roderigo killed and... Cassio killed? No, Cassio is not killed. Not Cassio killed? Then murders out of tune and sweet revenge grows hard. Cry was that? Yes. What? Oh, and alas, that was my lady's voice. Help! Help! Oh, help! Oh, lady, speak again. Sweet Desdemona, oh, sweet mistress, speak. Oh, you must ever die. Oh, who has done this deed? Nobody. I myself. There were. C commend me to my kind lord. Help. Oh. Why, how should she be murdered? Alas, who knows? You heard her say herself, it was not I. She said so. I must needs report the truth. She is like a liar gone to burning hell. Twas I that killed her. Oh, the more angel she, and you the blacker devil. She turned to folly, and she was a whore. Thou dost the liar, and thou art a devil. Cast your top her. Ask thy husband, else thy husband knew it. My husband? Thy husband? That she was forced to wedlock? I with Cassio, nay. Had she been true, if heaven would make me such another world of one entire and perfect chrysolite, I'd not have sold her for it. My husband? What means this iteration, woman? I say thy husband does understand the word. My friend, thy husband, honest, honest, Iago. If he say so, may his pernicious soul rot half a grain a day. He lies to the heart. She was too fond of her most filthy bargain. Do thy worst. Oh, gum, oh, dolt, as ignorant as dirt. Thou hast done a deed. I care not for thy sword. I'll make thee known, though I lost twenty lives. Help, help, oh, help the war. I've killed my mistress. Murder! Montano, Iago, and the officers of the watch rush into the bedchamber. My mistress, here murder in her bed. Oh, 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 oh. Nay, stare not, masters, it is true indeed. Tis pitiful. But yet Tiago knows that she with Cassio hath the act of shame a thousand times committed. Cassio confessed it, and she did gratify his amorous works with that recognizance and pledge of love which I first gave her. I saw it in his hand. It was a handkerchief, an antique token my father gave my mother. Oh, heaven! Oh, heavenly power! Soon, hold your peace! Twill out! Twill out! I, peace! No, I will speak! Be wise and get you home! I will not! Spy your sword upon a woman! Oh, thou dull moor! That handkerchief thou speakst of, I found by fortune and did give my husband. Yes. For often with a solemn earnestness, he begged of me to steal it. Are there no stones in heaven but what serve for the thunder? 
Precious villain! The Moor attacks the Argo. Ah. I bleed, sir, but not killed. The ah. woman falls. Surely I've killed his wife. Iago kills Amelia. Othello's sword is taken from him by his officers. Othello, you must forsake this room and go with us. Your power and your command is taken off, and Cassio rules in Cyprus. For Iago, if there be any cunning cruelty that can torment him much and hold him long, it shall be his. Come, bring away. Soft you, a word or two before you go. I have done the state some service, and they know it no more of it. I pray you in your letters when you shall these unlucky deeds relate. Speak of me as I am. Nothing extenuate nor set down aught in malice. Then must you speak of one that loved not wisely but too well. Of one not easily jealous, but being wrought perplexed in the extreme. Of one whose hand, like the base Indian, threw a pearl away, richer than all his tribe. Of one whose subdued eyes, albeit unused to the melting mood, dropped Tears as fast as the Arabian trees, their medicinal gum. Set you down this, and say beside that in Aleppo once, where a malignant and a turban Turk beat a Venetian and traduced the state, I took by the throat the circumcised dog and smote him thus. <coughs> Spoke as mad. Desdemona, I kiss thee ere I kill thee. No way but this, killing myself to die. 